Well, it's, uh, <clears throat> these seasons go faster and faster, so here we are getting ready to go into Week 10. Uh, BYU here at home uh, coming off, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> too close for comfort uh, win last week against Hawaii. Really proud of the guys for the way they came out again and played a full four quarters of football, so it's, it's good to see some momentum growing, but now we got our, our hands full of BYU. BYU's, uh, you know, having a tough season right now, but I know Kalani well, and I know that, you know, he uh, really cares about that program, and uh, he, he's a strong guy, and he'll get these guys ready to go. Uh, a little scary when you watch their games. I mean, they've um, they've lost quite a few games, but they, they've been close. Even last week, it's a one-touchdown game um, with a good Fresno State team. So it's a team you cannot take lightly. Um, they're always going to be big and physical, and they are that up front on the offensive line and the defensive line. We're going to have to do a really good job of you know wearing them down and being able to run the football, find a way to do that, and be able to put the ball in the air. Defense is going to have to again go out there and you know eliminate big plays. We're going to have to create some turnovers and then play well on special teams. So, you know, if we go out and you know, and we've had a good week of practice thus far, we got to continue to do that and, and get ourselves ready. And I think there's going to be an opportunity out there on Friday night to get a win, but there's also an opportunity for them to get a win. So, we just got to keep working on the little things and uh, keep playing with a lot of energy and go out there and fight for a win. Their, their quarterback situation. How do you prepare for that? Well, you know, we've looked at that, obviously, with uh, the starter going down. And, and you look at, we don't know much about the freshman, the real young guy. Um, you know, a little bit more about, you know, number seven, he, uh, Haig. He does a good job. You know, we watch the Wisconsin game quite a bit because that's the game that he actually started. And you kind of see their thought process with him. So you get an idea of how they'll handle him. He's athletic. He can he can run, you know, fairly well. And I'm sure with an entire week of prep and practice going in, um, he'll be even more prepared for this game. So you, you just kind of, they're all a little bit different. They weren't running too much read zone and quarterback runs the last couple of weeks because of the injury the quarterback had. Now with a healthy guy that is kind of a dual threat, I think you'll see a little bit more of that. How challenging is that like preparing for someone who you don't have a lot on? Uh, I would say more more for the offensive line it would be more of a challenge than the quarterback. I mean, we've seen, we've seen what he do. I mean, the scheme isn't going to change at the end of the day. So we'll for sure have to keep him in the pocket with, like Coach said, he's athletic. So yeah, it'll be a good challenge. Tony, is there any plan in this game to get Armani Rodgers in, or is it Johnny Stanton's game? Well, I mean, um, you've seen how a little bit we've used Kurt a little bit earlier on. There's some packages where he's in. That, that still is around. Um, we are preparing Armani. I mean, he's getting the two reps. Johnny is getting the one reps. Um, but don't be surprised if you, if you see Armani go in in certain situations. I mean, he still is a, a very capable young man, and he can do a lot of really good things. So, um, I, you know, if I was a fan or in the media, I wouldn't be surprised to see him at different times throughout the season and every game we play from here on out. Coach, we're at the quarterback position. Um, after the game, you talked a lot about the selflessness, and basically that's how this is working, you know. And um, a lot of coaches say that, but it genuinely seems like Johnny was saying even if it was Armani out there, he would have been just as happy with the win. Is, has that the selflessness kind of helped this process between go, you know, between Johnny and? Yeah, you know, it has. You know, it's really helped our program. That was one of the biggest things we talked about. If we really want to move forward, we really want to win here and do it consistently, we're going to have to have a lot of selfless behavior. And, you know, another reflection of it that we kind of forgot about real quick was going into the year, you know, you have Charles Williams, who's the number one. Well, you're a guy that's coming back. You've, you, you've had a ton of yards. You know, you, you were the guy and got hurt. And then Charles ends up winning the job in camp. And you can tell, by the way, Lexington just picked up from week one in that two role that, to taking it over in the year that he's had. It never affected him. You know, and I think Johnny's another reflection of that and you, know, you look at guys like Kurt who's still upbeat and you know um, guys like Brian Keyes who's now a two and Farrell's the one and you know our guys understand first of all there's a cultural competition you know if you if you rest for for too long you're gonna get Wally pipped around here which is a good thing um, and at the same time when your opportunity does come back up you're gonna take advantage of it so um, it's really good to see that and you know Armani his attitude of practice today I mean you ask these guys the way he's out there the energy and practicing hasn't phased him one bit now you know, we got to do a good job of messaging it with the players and make sure they understand that, you know, you're going to get other opportunities. But uh, it's been really good to see the way Johnny handled the situation, the way he's taken over, and the way Armani's responded. Other than the change of quarterback, what happened a couple of weeks ago that got things moving in the right, right direction? You know, it's funny. It's um, – not changing, being consistent, consistent in the messaging. And, you know, people think, well, what did you do differently? We didn't. I think that was the key ingredient. I think when all this noise happens and, you know, you're sitting there and you're struggling, you're not where you want to be, it's real easy to panic and start changing everything and breaking everything apart. But, you know, we didn't do it. We just kept coaching. We stayed consistent with the messaging. Um, the one thing we did a little bit different was change the practice structure. You know, we took one day of physicality off the guys. I think that has helped. But as far as 
the, what we're teaching and what we're coaching and the schemes we're running, nothing's really changed. But what you've seen is, uh, uh, you know, these guys, these older guys, they've been playing well the whole year. But now you're seeing a guy like Jericho Flowers in his first year starting, now at the latter point of the year, tackling better in space, communicating better, making better plays on the ball. You're seeing a true freshman, Farrell Hester, who started off playing a little bit at the beginning of the year, now taking the majority of the reps, really starting to become a great football player in the middle of our defense. You know, you're starting to see guys like uh, Gabe McCoy and uh, Jay Javen White, who, again, first year starting this year, and now as we get later in the year and they've gotten more reps and they've seen more football and football IQs develop, they become better football players. And, you know, uh, I think Johnny added a spark, no doubt about that. And um, I think a lot of different things. I think we've just grown up and matured. And, you know, at the end of the year, for the first time, we're actually becoming a better football team as, as we come to the close. Sanchi you said a couple weeks ago that you, there was a determined tone to your voice about how all these games are winnable. And what, what, what gave you that, I guess, that mindset? And did you feel like it, the, the, the team in general felt that way too? You know, the mindset is just something that just is, has always been there. Uh, I've always been a competitive player, and this is definitely a competitive team. You can see it. You, you feel it in the locker room. You can see it out of practice. You see it in the games, especially later on in the games. We're all out there. We're pumped. We're psyched to get out there and go. And, um, you know, I, I still hold firm with that belief. We, the rest of these games are all winnable games, and we're going to go out there with the attitude that we're going to get wins in these games. Mike, you've been in the program when things have gone poorly in the middle of the end of the season, you haven't been able to turn it around. Now you're here, and you guys are. You've won consecutive games, and everything's trending in the right way. What's that like to be a part of that and see that in, in the moment? Uh, this is a great thing. It makes me feel good for the program in the future. Um, I know I want to finish out and uh, kind of start off that first year of a success in this program, so I'm happy about it. Coach, you talk about the, the changing culture, changing that culture to a winning culture. I know it's one game at a time, but, but looking at the finish line, you guys are on the cusp of doing a lot of great things and getting to that eventual goal. How exciting is that opportunity, seeing what's, what's on your plate ahead of you? Well, it's exciting, but at the same time, I think it's so important to temper it right now. Um, it, it really is about, you know, this game right in front of us. And, you know, and we, you know, we can't put the cart before the horse. We, we have to continue to work and, and really focus on the details. We're starting to understand that every detail in the game matters. And there's going to be highs and there's going to be lows. And making sure you keep an even-keeled approach to, to every possession, every play, never getting too high, never getting too low, but playing with consistent energy. And it's good to see. You know, it's, um, that was one of the biggest things coming in here, you know, a couple years ago was, okay, what are we going to do to really change the culture? Because, you know, you, you can't can't quick fix it. You can't put a Band-Aid on it. There's a, it's, it's a slow process. Now, we wish it would have been a little faster. Um, I, I think we all do. But the one thing that we've seen, especially this year, is with the exception of probably the Ohio State game, I don't think there's been a game we haven't gone out and had a legitimate opportunity to win the game coming out after halftime. It's that hasn't happened since I've been here. They, they every single game was a winnable game walking into the third quarter. That's completely flipped. Now, you know, we, we kind of got stuck in the mud a little bit. We figured it out, and we're playing better in the second halves. And um, But it can change real quick. I mean, you go out, and you don't have the result you want on Saturday. you, you got to go right back to work and go fight for the next one. So, again, you know, we'd love to keep the momentum and keep stacking the limbs all the way through the end of the year. But I think I if you try to do it all at once, it becomes a big, heavy weight. So we're just going to go ahead and carry the weight of BYU this week, and we'll worry about the next one when it comes. I think Kyle and Mike, this is for, for both of you, either of you, but just seeing that string of success late in the year, the difference that it's making going into senior, uh, senior night for you guys, I mean, just the opportunity is there for you guys. And it's, is it a different feeling than you felt in your time here in the program? Uh, I, I'd say it was the same, somewhat the same feeling we had last year. I believe we went into the last two games. If we won both of them, we went to a bowl game. So, yeah, it's a good feeling, but you want to take this game not not too lightly. You don't want to get too caught up in the success. You want to keep that mindset of just grinding out the week. Yeah, it's a very it, you know it's a feeling that the feeling stays throughout the season. You know, it's nothing exceptionally new. Um, it does mean a lot more in this game just because it's our last home game as seniors, and you know there's there's a lot of stuff going on. But like Mike said, like Coach has been saying, at the end of the day, it's the game that's on the plate. And we just got to focus on that game. We got to approach it like we do every other game. Tony, do you feel like the adversity you guys have faced this season has made you a tougher team? Without a doubt. 
I mean, a couple of weeks ago, you know, we, we just talked to you know, and I think I said it last week, but the, the talk um, uh, in our locker room and with our players has really been us against everybody. You know, I mean, we felt, you know, I, mean, I think everybody felt a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. We heard a lot of, you know, really negative things, and, you know, it's hard for a lot of young guys to block it out. And that sometimes it's hard for you as an adult to block it out, but you have to do that. But I think what it does is when you know how hard you're working and you know the time and effort you're putting in and you know that, you know, it's not a lack of effort, it's just lack of execution. There's certain things that are going on or getting in your way. You know, it, it can kind of can kind of get you hot a little bit. And I think our guys got a little hot. I think they got a little frustrated, um, and they stayed committed to one another. They didn't point the finger out. They pointed the finger in. And and they said, you know what, the heck with it. We're going to go play for the name on the front and our back. And anybody doesn't like it, oh, well. You know, and, and I think that's the attitude we've had. And you've seen it. I mean, you just look at the sideline. You look at the energy. You look at the way guys were on the field and celebrate. And we just decided, you know what, take the burden off and let's carry it together. Tony, what's your uh, health look like at your kicker and punter spots right now? I don't know. I feel like there's a big, like, you know, specialist conspiracy going on with our guys right now. Um, Pantels, he, he, he can kick the PATs. He's limited in the distance from the field goals, and uh, Hernandez can kick off but can't do the field goals, which, yeah. And then um, Pantels will punt, and Lang is back. So we're just going to kind of keep working that one. Do you have, like, a, a range for Pantels that you feel comfortable with right now? Yeah, I mean, I would say depending on wind, if, there, if there's no wind, probably 20-yard line in. You know, I mean, we might stretch it a little bit depending on how he's feeling as we get closer to the game. That was one of the big issues last week. Um, but as his leg gets better and he feels better, that, you know, we know he can kick 45, 47. That's kind of the max distance. You may line up for a 50 or something. But if he's not 100%, that's going to really chop that off a little bit. So it's a lot. But you know what? It's been good because it's allowed us to be more aggressive. What about your health on the defensive side? Yeah, we're, we're, we're banged up. You know, just like BYU. BYU's got a bunch of injuries. So do we. Everybody does this time of year. But um, Bailey is um, – He's iffy for game. We'll see. Questionable. Khalili's iffy for the game. Uh, Jameer Outsey's iffy for the game also. He, you know, we'll, we'll see how he is. Hasn't practiced in the last two days. Um, obviously, Evan's out for the year. Um, that's an issue. Uh, Jaron Caldwell, you knew about that. He, he's done for the year. I'm on the offensive line. Um, trying to think. What else? I think those are the major ones. Um, just mentioned his name. Uh, Outsey? Outsey. You know, his injury. Ankle. Yeah, so he's out there, and, you know, he's with the training staff, you know, starting to jog a little bit. So, again, questionable. We'll see. Hopefully he gets better before kickoff. Playing off of that, um, Kyle, plug and play is a big part of sports, especially in football, and you've seen that on, on the offensive line. Just last, last year and the last couple of years, Luke Kreitler, kind of the leader of the offensive line, that's, that's fallen on you now. You lose Zach Singer at the beginning of the year, you have to plug in uh, – uh, John Gray to pl take that role. Now you lose a uh, Caldwell. How much are you taking responsibility to talk to these guys to get them ready to plug and play? Because that's two of the th two of the five initial starters on the offensive line. You know the best thing about it is that we have we have depth and we have guys that are ready to play that you don't need, that you really don't need to be able to talk these guys up to get in there. Because I mean you look at it, we have. Uh, the, uh, Julio Garcia in at the left right now, and I mean he's been taking reps at left and right in the games intermittently. You know, getting reps in there, getting guys some breaks. So he's a guy with definite game experience that's already in there, getting you know doing well. And then we also have Michael Chevalier in there, who was a starter at one point last year. So we got guys that have game experience, guys who knows what it takes to get in there. And uh, the plug and play system that we have on the offensive line, it just it works uh, because we have these guys who get in the games and have experience, and they know what they need to do when they get in there. Tony, it's off topic a little bit, but working with Desiree about future scheduling, what kind of strategy or, or, you, or philosophy do you have on that? Well, you know, I know that, you know, we have talked and, you know, and she, you know, wants to bring in, you know, great football teams in here, especially, you know, with the new stadium coming and things like that. So it's kind of a balance. You know, you want to – you're going to probably play two uh, Power 5 schools a year. You know, you'd like to have a 1-1 AA school and then a non-Power 5 school, and I think that's kind of what every – you know, non-Power 5 school is facing. You know, you need some of that money, you know, for revenue generating. Um, also, you know, they're great opportunities for your fans. You'd love to get some of them at home, so you're doing home and homes. That's been real neat to see when you look at future schedules and you look at the teams. We're not just going to visit, but teams that will be coming here to Las Vegas, that's a big deal. So, um, I th you know, you got to be careful with it. You know, you have to play some of those games, and you should want to play some of those games. We've had some great opportunities and some great environments that have helped this program grow since I've been here. You know, UCLA's and 
you know, Ohio State's and Michigan's, and those have been great environments. Uh, we go to USC next year. That's exciting. We want to play in those games. you got to be careful playing too many of them, though. You know, you start playing three and four of them, and then, you know, you could have diminishing returns as you go on throughout the, throughout the year, depth-wise. So, um, you know, when I look at future schedules, I, I, mean, I like them. I mean, I think they all look pretty good. And uh, if I'm a fan, I'm excited about it. And if I'm a player on the roster, I'm excited about it. Do you think, like, the, the deal you have with Cal is going to be more than normal, as opposed to, say, a, a one-time trip to Ohio State? Yeah, well, me personally, you know, you love playing Pac-12 schools because these are the areas in which you recruit. So you go into these areas, you know, it's an opportunity for them to, you know, play in front of, you know, home crowds, things like that. You know, the Arizona States, you know, the the, the Cal's, the UCLA's, the USC's. Those are very advantageous to, uh, advantageous to us because of where we recruit. A couple years ago, that home and home with Houston, that was a cool deal because we recruit Houston so much. So sometimes it's not just, you know, who you play. It's, you know, the location of those teams and how that benefits recruiting.